I didn't ask Nick to clean the shop, but I went ahead and just cleaned this whole area right here. And uh, I'm gonna start building something. Hopefully I get it done. And hopefully no complications. By the way, my cast is off. And if you can see, there's a couple nasty scars there. And a little bit right there. But it's not doing too bad. I can only lift about maybe 10 pounds at the very, very max but five pounds is decent and I just got to be really careful and gentle so I don't damage anything. I can do all that, but yeah, doing pretty good. So slow and easy and steady and I do have a brace for this thing, but I don't want to get it dirty. Uh, it's not much of a brace, it just has a little bit of a backbone and just basically cloth on it. So I'll probably just take it super slow, careful and you guys are probably going to say, don't do it, but I'm going to do it. So, all right, let's get to work. Now that I chopped these four pieces right here, they're all the exact same length. These are the up and down part, vertical part of the doors. I gotta have two per door and there's two doors we're making. Now I need to use a lathe and uh, make some little round dowels that can slide in between because when the doors go together, I want it so that they don't like wobble in and out. You'll see what I'm talking about. Let's go use the lathe now. There, now you can see that should hold the door together in case if it's really windy and they start chattering pretty good. There we have it. Now, as you can tell, that's one door and that's another door. Now I just gotta cut the pieces in between and weld it all up, square it all up. And then we can put the sheet metal on it, make sure I have the rollers ready and get some paint on it too. So as you can tell, I used a bolt for my guide so they can be the exact same width from the ends. And then of course it's got a carbide bit on this end mill and it just chewed right through it. Awesome. Now, when we're welding this up, we wanna make sure we get it as straight as we can. So we'll measure from one corner to the other corner and box it in to get the right measurement because if it's off one inch, your doors will be crooked or so. But what we need to do, which we, oh, what we've already done, is we've taken an angle iron piece, ran it the full length of the top, so the top is gonna be perfectly square. Then we'll go off the corners and figure it all out. And once we get it where we need to, we'll tack it all, and then we'll come back around and weld it all up once it's all good. Well, it's been probably a couple months, but we've had these doors made and in the building. Dad painted them, got them looking nice. Leg arms fabricated them, they look good. They just need hung on that building that the doors ripped off of when the wind blew really hard. So we're finally in it. It's beautiful, it's like 50 some degrees. We got this day in tomorrow and then it's gonna get cold. So yes. we decided we better. This leg arms is under the weather today. He's not feeling very good. Who knows what's going on? Could be a little wimpiness or he's just not feeling very good, which is probably the real thing. He's not a wimp. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put sheets on these, get them built, then we're gonna take them over way over there and hang them on that building. Looks like an easy job. Good, yeah, and then we're gonna be beside siding ourselves.
Okay, one door is on and I think it's set right. It rolls smooth, we're making progress. It's golden hour, that's even cooler because everything looks pretty. But I have two rollers, okay good. I gotta put these on, get it to where I think it needs to be spaced and then we'll try to feed it in the tube. And that trolley just rolls back and forth just like that. Okay, after about 15 tries of raising and lowering the corners of this thing, I think we got so it finally fits tight because there's four four points where the doors are hanging two on each door and if you take one and drop a little bit it changes the way the seam is in the center so i think he's got it leg arms who's feeling a little better as you can see he's back he's getting the door latches in here these will be used to pull the door tight you can't even see it's dark anyways you can trust me and there's birds in here Job done. The doors are rolled real nice. The latch mechanism on the inside is really good. And hopefully now we won't have birds in that building for a while. But we do have to go back in there in just a few minutes. We have lentils in a bin that we've had since I think 2017. And we finally sold them. There wasn't a lot of them. We were keeping them for seed, but I just don't think we're ever going to do lentils again. It just it wasn't a very good experience for us. So we're gonna get the truck started, get the vac going and suck those lentils out. There's only about 700 bushels or so. Take that in and get it out of here. Now guys, I wanna to talk to you about something real quick. So you guys probably have heard of TikTok. There's a lot of platforms out there. That's one that I'm not really that on, but YouTube is starting their own version of it, sort of built into the platform. It's in its infancy stage right now. And basically it's gonna be called YouTube Shorts and there's already a category for it. So, coming up soon, you guys will start seeing little shorts appear. There'll be uploads, they'll only be 30 seconds to a minute long, kind of like a story, but there'll be a full upload to YouTube. So if you see that happen, don't be surprised, it's just that. Supposedly it's a good technique to use on YouTube, it won't be monetized, there won't be ads on it. It'll just be something hopefully fun and short, and you know, make you kind of laugh a little bit. Who knows, we'll see. I gotta figure it out, because that's my job. <laughs> All right, just where you wear. It's coming. I've got the 7140 hooked up to the air vac, grain vac. I gotta go over. We've got a small, small bin of lentils that we've had for a couple years that we were keeping for seed in case we are gonna seed some more. Um, it doesn't really look like we're gonna seed any this year, and we decided just to go ahead. The guy offered us a price in town. So we decided, you know, let's just get rid of it. It's not even a full semi trailer load. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and move it. So that's my plan. It's beautiful. It's 51 degrees. Um, yeah, now I know what the people in Texas, Louisiana, Florida, and Hawaii feel like. Well, why they got this on? Habit, probably. So anyway, but I'm gonna head on over, get the truck out, and we'll get it back get it to town and and then from there on we'll uh, we'll go on to the next adventure or whatever Kobe's got to plan for us this is the bin that has that little bit of lentils in maybe 600 plus bushels um, anyway it's been in here a while and uh, we need to get it gone need to have it hauled to town and the other thing is the reason why is there has been an encroachment of uh, iron that's gradually blowing this way. I'm sure it's the wind. And eventually this will be covered and we might not find it again. So I think it's best to get it now while we can still see it. So, all right, this old school bin uh, probably won't have anything else put in it ever again, except more iron. What is it? You see a mouse? Huh? Where's the mouse? Yep, we're gonna clean all this bottom out that gradually filled this oh this old type of bin. It's just a place where they can shovel out the grain as they need it. Um, but uh Kobe, 
is uh, checking out, making sure there's nothing alive in there. There, gone. Overall, they were in good shape. A little bit on the top that's slightly spoiled, a little bit around the door, that's typical. Over the vast majority of it, it'll barely be a quarter percent that's spoiled mixed in with it. We tried to get rid of it as much as we could that was spoiled and separated out, but that's good to get that done. One less thing on your mind that you're thinking about all the time. You farmers know what I'm talking about. It's always there. It's like, oh yeah, that one bin that's got lentils in it and we haven't sold it. Now it's sold. 8,000 bucks in the pocket. Well, what we got going on here is a little dusting of snow. So that means that the most comfortable place to work is in the heated shop. So what I have here is a car that we're going to give to our daughter and son to use for the couple, three months or so until they can uh, get ready to get their all the papers in order to go across the ocean to be missionaries um, back in the country they've been. Uh, this car is just an extra one we have. We use it to go back and forth to town on the gravel roads. And uh, it needs wheel bearings, I believe. I took it out on the road. There's a humming noise, kind of a little bit of a grinding, but it doesn't change with uh, torque on the, on the drive axles. Um, and if you turn one direction, it's a little noisier. If you turn the other direction, it's quiet. So I think it's throwing against one side, the bearing is getting rough. Uh, wheel Front wheel bearing on this. So I've got two, because um, they were about the same price as one. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put both of those in, in the front. And I think that's the problem, because I don't think it's the drive axle. It doesn't, there's no clanking, the boots are good. I checked it before when we were doing the brakes on the rear uh, a little bit ago. And uh, it just seems solid, just doesn't seem like there's any enough play in, in them to be uh, to be going out so it must be the wheel bearing I'll find out so I'm gonna run it in and then we'll put it on the hoist and we'll see if it's what I think it is Okay, 175 foot-pounds is what the torque is. So I've got the torque wrench and I gotta hold the wheel from turning and then Okay, that should uh, should be good. I put a little bit of uh, blue on it so that it'll keep it from turning getting loose up. But anyway, 175 pounds so, put the brake assembly back on, put the rotor course on, then the brake assembly, put the screws back in, and I can put the wheel back on, and we'll see. Otherwise, uh, I don't see anything. Seems to be all right. Okay, I have, uh, I have both wheel bearings on. I'm gonna, I just let it down from the hoist, and I'm gonna take it out for a test drive to see if that took care of that um, growling noise, and Hopefully it did. It wasn't too bad of a fix. It wasn't too expensive. Um, this car has about 186,000 plus on it. So, I mean, that very possible that that one wheel bearing was probably getting a little rough. So we'll find out on the road. Okay. Yes, I uh, took it down the road. I didn't find any uh, noise. No, there was the noise that I had before it was gone. I uh, took it up to speed, no change, uh, rotated the steering wheel back and forth to see if, lay it against that bearing, if it would make a noise. He uh, interrupted my train of thought. Kobe, it was me, Can, yeah? here, yeah, it was me. Yeah, what were you barking, huh? I know, you're upset that you didn't get to go. Yeah, I know. Anyway, yeah, 
so everything's taken care of that was an easy fix uh it was a very was a very inexpensive fix and uh, i think this car is good to go